So team, keep it clean. Let me know if we've been saying this or if we've been saying this. So last year, and really every year since Lamar Jackson's been Baltimore Ravens starting quarterback, their run game has been a strength. Their run game has been super strong. It's been one of the top run games in the entire NFL. But what did the Baltimore Ravens try to do at the trade deadline last year? They tried to add Derrick Henry, but why, why would they try to add a running back to a run game that's strong? Well, to make it even stronger and make it dominant. So it obviously didn't work out because the Titans shut it down. So what did the Ravens do? They doubled down, and they said, going for Derrick Henry was so nice, we're going to try it twice, and they got him this offseason. And you see everything that Derrick Henry has done for these Baltimore Ravens. Now, Baltimore Ravens' run game this year has been amazing. It's been excellent. It's been on another level. But their pass game has been, too. Their pass game has been really, really good. Even with a mistake here and a drop there, ooh, their pass game has been excellent. So what did the Baltimore Ravens do? Something that we have been talking about on here, make it even stronger. They did that with Deontay Johnson. Now, don't get me wrong. Is this a needle mover for the Baltimore Ravens and their entire team? Not necessarily, but this is a good trade. It was good compensation. It's very, very, very low risk with potential high reward, and they upgrade the quality of their depth because so much of the conversation was oh my goodness what happens if Zay Flowers goes down oh my goodness what happens if Rashad Bateman goes down and we of course don't want anything to happen to either one of those two to nobody at all but you got to think about that what would be the case if one of the Baltimore Ravens top wide receivers if they were dealing with a little something then what would it be but now with the Baltimore Ravens they are they're making a strength even stronger so now you got a Zay Flowers you still got a Rashad Bateman but now if Deontay Johnson is your third receiver if he's your third receiver, then that's certainly an upgrade in my opinion. You still got Nelson Aguilar. And then there's Tylen Wallace, but he don't get many snaps at wide receiver. Uh, there's Tez Walker. He don't get any snaps at wide receiver. Uh, and then that's that. So the Baltimore Ravens, they did get a little bit better today with this move. But we're going to go over everything that you need to know about this trade, everything that it can do for the Baltimore Ravens. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and leave a like on the video because we like the fact that Eric DaCosta he be listening. I, I be trying to tell y'all. I know Eric DeCosta be watching these videos, man. I know he be seeing y'all comments, y'all questions, and all. I, I be trying to tell y'all that, man. Like, who out there was saying, oh, Raven should trade for a wide receiver? When I was saying, people would look at me like I'm crazy. This ain't Raven. Why you want to run wide receiver? Why you so stuck on wide receiver? And look what Eric DeCosta did. Anyway, let's talk about this trade. So, the compensation. The Ravens are sending a 2025 fifth round pick to the Carolina Panthers for not only Deontay Johnson, but... Deontay Johnson and a 2025 six-round pick. So, basically, they just swapping picks. That's it. Ravens sending their fifth, and they getting Panthers six and Deontay Johnson. That's how you know. Panthers want to get rid of him. Panthers like, look, t t take whoever you want. Hey, if y'all want to throw into David Clowney in there, too, be my guest. Be our guest. But anyway, continuing. Says not, so, not only are the Panthers sending Deontay Johnson and a six-round pick, but get this. They are also paying down some of his salary, so the Ravens will only... And this from Jeff Zrebick. He said the Ravens will only owe him about 625000 for the rest of the year. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking Super, super low risk, man. Super low risk. So you're trading a fifth-round pick to acquire a receiver who you're familiar with because he used to play for the Steelers. So Ravens are very, very familiar with Deontay Johnson. But super, super low risk and potential high reward. You make your team even better. Man, let's, let's go, Eric DeCosta. Good move. I know you ain't done yet, and we're going to talk about that later. But anyway, it says, uh, right now, the Ravens' fifth rounder is currently around pick number 158 overall. And the Panthers' sixth rounder that they traded uh, to the Ravens uh, is currently around 177 overall. It says, so a movement of about 19 spots in order to acquire Deontay Johnson. That's it. That's it. Uh, super low risk. Deal. Super low risk type of trade. Let's continue. Now, Jess Ribbick said the impetus behind the deal to get Deontay Johnson was improving the wide receiver depth. That makes sense. I get that. But it's this next part that I was not aware of. I'm like, oh, okay. I like that. He said the Ravens have been thin at wide receiver all year, right? But Johnson does have some return experience as well, and the Ravens have gotten nothing from their return game all year, and he could be an option to help in that area. So, boom, right there. Right there, because we could be wondering, and we're still wondering, how are the Ravens going to fit him in into the wide receiver room? How are they going to get him into the mix, into the lineup and whatnot? They'll figure that out, but that's another way for him to get on the field like that. Because at punt return, we ain't got nothing. At kick return, we ain't been getting nothing. So Deontay Johnson, he could come in and provide a spark on offense, but even before the offense touches the field, 
He could come in and give us a jump on special teams, and boy, could we use that. Now, this came from Raven Nation Live. He said, in Deontay Johnson's rookie season with the Pittsburgh Steelers, bleh, but he had 20 punt returns for 248 yards. He had an 85-yard uh, punt return touchdown. So he took one to the house his rookie year, and he had a league-leading 12.4 yards per return average, and he was named to the second-team All-Pro team as a punt return specialist. So he was acknowledged around the league. Actually, AP. AP is All-Pro. That's, that's like real deal. Like, Pro Bowl is cool, but AP All-Pro, that's when it's like really real. Anyway, continuing. He also said, according to ESPN Analytics, because – that's how you can help in the return game. But what about as a wide receiver? It says, according to ESPN analytics, analytics, no receiver has been more open than Deontay, than Deontay Johnson since entering the league in 2019. From 2019 to 2023, Johnson had four of the top 14 open scores. So that boy is like 7-11 because he always open. But that really reminds me of two receivers that we have on the roster already. That being a Zay Flowers and that especially being Rashad Bateman. We know that's what they specialize in in getting open. Um, but how does he compare to those wide receivers? Because in my opinion, with Deontay Johnson, um, while I said I don't think he's a needle mover at wide receiver for the Ravens, but he does provide good depth. But he doesn't necessarily complement Zay Flowers and complement a Rashad Bateman and what I was hoping the Baltimore Ravens would do at the wide receiver position. Uh, I talked about them adding that tall jump ball, big body wide receiver, because I feel like that could really complement the receivers, those Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. But if he's getting open, obviously that's the most important thing. So I guess when it comes to the jump ball, the Ravens are still going to roll with uh, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. But I, I think it really wouldn't have hurt. And it, it would have been an even better move if they got that type of player at the wide receiver position. Now, I ain't complaining at all. But I think that would have been a better move for the Baltimore Ravens to have made. But th this is not a bad one. And again, low risk. It ain't like they gave up a first round pick or a second round pick or a third round pick or a fourth round pick. They gave up a fifth round and they got a, they got a sixth round pick back. So they didn't even lose a draft pick. They just moved down a couple of spots and to 19 spots and that was it. So look, I ain't complaining. I, I do think that they could have went in a different direction, but this is not a bad move at all and it can help like we mentioned before. But we ain't done yet. So Sarah Ellison, she pointed out, she said, Deion, because a lot of Ravens fans have been like, man, don't this guy be dropping the ball a lot? Why are we adding another receiver who got drop issues? And, hey, if that's a concern, I, I get it. Trust me, I do, because yeah, that don't help. But Sarah Ellison pointed this out. She said, Deontay Johnson, who is 5'10", 183 pounds, threw seven games this year. So the stats right here, right now. He has 30 catches, 357 yards, three touchdowns. His separation percentage is 65.31%. And his drop rate is 6.3%. So 6.3 of the passes that come his way, he drops them. Out of 100%, obviously. So 6.3, is that bad? Is that good? How, how did that compare to, say, Zay Flowers? Well, Sarah Ellison did that. She said, for comparison, here is Zay Flowers' numbers who leads the Ravens in yards and catches through eight games. So Zay Flowers has 41 catches. He has 527 yards. He has one touchdown. He only got one touchdown? Really? We need to give him an end zone more. Anyway, uh, his separation percentage is 68.42. So Deontay Johnson's separation percentage is 65.31. Zay Flowers' separation percentage is 68.42. Zay Flowers' drop rate. Deontay Johnson's is 6.3%. Zay Flowers' is, is 4.7%. Now, um, I'm going to ask y'all, when do you, when the last time Zay Flowers dropped a pass? Do you remember Zay Flowers dropping a lot of passes? No, not really. Um, I can think of, uh, oh, what? I don't even remember what game it was. Maybe it was the Bucks game? I, maybe, but nah, I don't even remember. But my point is with, with Zay Flowers, his drop rate is 4.7%. And I can't even remember the last time that he dropped one. And Zay Flowers, we know Zay Flowers for catching pretty much everything that comes his way. So if Deontay Johnson's drop rate is only 6.3%, so it's a little bit higher, but it's just, it's a little less than 2% higher. I, I don't think that's a big deal. But like I always say, man, it's with the drops. It's not always that you drop. I always say, as long as you make more plays than you miss, that's what's the most important to me, but it's the situational drops. I think that's what bug, bugs Ravens fans the most because obviously last week we saw with Rashad Bateman. And with the big drop that he had at the end of the game, that had actually made me forget about the drop that he had earlier because I completely forgot about that one because it, it was a perfect pass on third down. Rashad Bateman dropped it. He looked like he got a little scared of the hit, 
But he dropped it, tried to turn up field before he caught the ball. Ball went flying up in the air, then it went down in completion. I said, oh, man, I forgot. I completely forgot about it. But then the drop, the situational drop where he said the sun was in his eyes and he saw the ball all right up until the last second, then it hit him right in the head. It was unfortunate. But since that was a situational drop and the situation was so significant and it was bad, it was like, oh, my goodness. Babe. That's why so many fans were very upset and frustrated with Rashad Bateman. Now, does that make Rashad Bateman a bad wide receiver? No, no. I understand fans are frustrated. I understand the fans have been saying this, that, and a third about Rashad Bateman ever since that play. Are there excuses for that drop? <sighs> it's tough to say because I wasn't in a position. But Rashad, he, he said it was the son. So, hey, it is what it is. Now, I did see some article that said our Grand Delpit said that Rashad Bateman had been running his mouth throwing the game. I don't know how true that is or not. But that was such a tough drop. But anyway, back to Deontay uh, Johnson. Um, now, with all that being said, everything that, that, that we don't went over, how are y'all feeling about this addition of Deontay Johnson? Like I said, I'm cool with it. Uh, he is somebody that can help as a receiver, uh, as a return man. And you, and you think about the depth that we got at the wide receiver position now. It's a beautiful thing. And he's somebody that a, a lot of times when Ravens, when we look at, as fans, we look at wide receivers who the Ravens could potentially add to the mix. We think, oh, could that wide receiver play in the AFC North? Even though it ain't the same AFC North that it used to be, but he obviously can because he obviously did already. But with all that being said, with his stats from this year, with the trade compensation being said, with the Panthers who are going to be paying the majority of his salary, the Ravens only on the hook for 625000 with the drop rate, with the separation rate, with all these stats that we don't went over with talking about Deontay Johnson. You know what the most important one is out of everything that I saw today? is that he's from Tampa, Florida. We got another Florida Raven in the building. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions and see what y'all got to say. If you're a Team Keep It Clean patron or want to become one, go to patreon.com slash angravenvids. Or if you want to send your question and have it featured, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Let's hear what the Team Keep It Clean patrons had to say. First, my guy, Devin, he said, I'm okay with this Deontay Johnson signing. Uh, I think his route running will definitely benefit Lamar Jackson. I still believe we either need to trade for a pass rusher or a difference maker defensive back. Oh, yeah. Hey, like, like I said earlier, Ravens cannot, should not, and they will not be done. This is, again, it, it was a fifth-round pick. They sent a fifth-round pick, and they got a sixth back. So this is not the end-all, be-all. This is not, because you defense still got to come on the field, too. Defense still got to play, too. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's the defense that we've been seeing for the past, what, eight weeks? And, yeah, no. So, yeah, Ravens ain't done yet. I, I can guarantee that they ain't done yet. And I don't even know what's going on inside the building, and I'm still guaranteeing they ain't done yet. He said, just my opinion. Uh, you're the goal with this stuff, so what else do you think we'll do before Tuesday's deadline? Oh, I ain't the goal with nothing. But I would think that they would add uh, another pass rusher. Next question came from another team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy 101. He said, Angry, hey, I hope you and the family are doing well. I understand we trading for Deontay Johnson, and I'm glad that we actually make it moves. But why don't we use what we got already like a Dayton Wade? He was showing off in the preseason, even though I know you said there's a lot in front of him already, but it would make more sense instead of this trade. Uh, experience, experience. Uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, they are in win-now mode. Not saying that Dayton Wade couldn't come in and help, because I think he certainly could, but they went with somebody who's more experienced in the league. I mean, obviously more experienced, because Dayton Wade, undrafted rookie free agent, uh, Deontay Johnson, he's been in the league since, what, 2019. So he got plenty of experience uh, on Dayton Wade. So they want somebody who's ready, who's been here, done that, uh, and, and got a lot of, got not a lot of mileage around the league, but got enough. Uh, he also said, uh, uh, definitely excited to see Keaton Mitchell get back on the field, but do you think it'll affect King Henry's flow and snaps? Uh, Ravens already affect King Henry's flow and <laughs> snaps. So Keaton Mitchell coming back, it won't have no impact on that because Ravens already do that themselves. I got Keontae said, Deontay Johnson let me put my Lamar jer jersey in the cart. Now I'm holding him to this Super Bowl so I won't get his jersey till he get us one. This is the type we needed. Proven guy, good hands, and will garner attention to allow Bate and Zay Flowers and the tight ends to eat when he's on the field. Now, Ravens, let's go get an edge rusher and we will be two for two. In New Orleans. I'm excited for this pickup. Oh, I love to hear that. And my guy Brian, he said, wake up in Graven. We just got a wide out, baby. Let's go. So he was obviously hyped about this move. 
Now, this question was sent yesterday from my guy, Derek. He said, Engraven, is our chance at a Super Bowl uh, really diminishing? I look back at 20, 2006, 2008, 2010, 2011, and, of course, 2019 and 23. All were good seasons of Ravens football just to fall flat to the Colts, Steelers, Steelers, Patriots, Titans, and Chiefs. Fast forward now, the current AFC juggernauts are the Chiefs, Bills, and the Bengals. When they're clicking, however, what do all three of those teams have in common? They get their QB some help. Hmm. Let's throw in the Texans as well. They got CJ some help. Even the Poverty Jets got Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams shaking my head. Why don't the Ravens do that? Boom. There you go. Look at that. He just sent this question in yesterday. So we ain't even got to read no more. It's still a lot left, but we ain't even got to read no more because they went out and they did it. So he said, I, I mean, your famous quote, the cap is cap. How hard is it to trade for a DK Metcalf or, or a Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack? Can't Lamar just tell EDC we need some more dogs on this team? Not no pit bulls, but Kane Corsos. I mean, look at Tom Brady. He recruited Randy Moss in 2007, took a pay cut to get him. Why do the Ravens never try to get better at wide receiver and edge to get that guy? Okay, see, that? Nah, I wouldn't have been mad at that either if they would have got like that guy. That guy. But what teams is trading away that guy? The one that... I would be, and I don't think he's that guy, but he could, he could be. But um, especially if he was on a different team, Cortland Sutton. And we're getting ready to go up against Cortland Sutton uh, this upcoming Sunday because we're getting ready to play the Broncos. Now, I wonder if the Baltimore Ravens would have waited to, uh, to play the Broncos and beat them. Because, oh, boy, y'all better not lose. No, don't play with me, Ravens. But then if they would have been like, all right, let's trade for Cortland Sutton now. Because the Broncos would have been that. But that's why it's tricky because... Maybe the Broncos would be like, no, I'll call him something doing his thing. He could help out Bo Nix and whatnot. So, uh, I don't know. And DK Metcalf with the Seahawks, they started off hot. Then they've been not. Um, and I don't even think they would get rid of him. So, but anyway, uh, continuing. He said, I mean, in 2003 and 2010, the Ravens got that guy. I'm talking about drafting Terrell Suggs in 2003 and trading for Bolden in 2010. They played on the same team. And what happened at the Super Bowl in 2012? Edge and wide receiver is what we need in a safety you can throw in there. That pass that Lamar attempt to make in the last second versus the Browns, a prime Anquan Bolden would have came down with that. Six foot one, 220, and pure muscle mass and attitude. Those interceptions, Ed Reed would have had. Oh, yeah, he would have had and more. Uh, he said Terrell Suggs would have been all over Jameson. Uh, 3.96 six seconds pl please with sizzle opposing qbs we're lucky if they even get the drop back what's going on in graven why don't this team try to get better well there you go they did today uh he said it's like roger goodell is telling the ravens hey we have to keep the league balanced because you see what lamar jackson does with tier b and c receivers if y'all traded for a tier a wide receiver it wouldn't be fair at all uh, and it would be considered sorcery like it's in dragon ball z or something how they use that headgear to contain brawley's power True power. Engraving. Getting Lamar a DK Metcalf or Justin Jefferson a Tyreek Hill segment would be unleashing Lamar Jackson's true power. And just like in a Dragon Ball Z, uh, the league can't have Lamar's true power unleashed. He said, went off track, but you get what I mean. Edge, safety, and wide receiver is needed. Now, so I will say I am glad that we read the entirety of that question because uh, you took it in a different direction. Because uh, first you talked about getting Lamar some more help, and they did do that. But then you talked about it being a tier A wide receiver. Now, I don't think they did that. Um, but and, but I do agree with you. If they ever do that for Lamar Jackson, then it's over. 